If you're anything like me, you dream about competing at Grand Prix all around the world. But hold your horses. You need the right horse to do this level and they're just not lying around. So what are we gonna do? So how we go about this is we buy horses, say as foals or yearlings, and we train them up through the levels. So this is Joey and he's one of the young horses. That's why he doesn't want to stand still. Um, so the difference between the younger horses and the older horses, it's kind of like the same as children and adults. Um, the younger horses are physically weaker because their bodies haven't quite finished growing. They haven't had that training. They haven't had um, the time to develop the muscles. And the older horses have had a lot more time to become more athletic and stronger. The other thing as well is their brains are a little bit different. Um, so the young horses are a lot more inquisitive. Um, they, you can't stand around as much with them. They get bored. He's doing quite well actually. Um, but yeah, they, you just really, I always think of like treating them as younger children. You have to keep it fun, make sure they're enjoying themselves. Um, and yeah, not put too much pressure on them too quickly because like I said, their bodies are growing um, and you can cause them injury if you put too much pressure on too quickly. Um, and as they get older and older, it's kind of like building up the layers. You can start to put that little bit more um, pressure on them in a good way. Uh, just so that they can start doing the Grand Prix because Grand Prix is hard. It's like the top level. It's physically the most demanding. So you have to chip away slowly, slowly, slowly to get them there. And I think that's why it takes so many years. So we start the horses at three and a half. They get broken in and then um, they have a little bit of a break. And then we start again with them when they're four. And then it takes them. So Wilf is 12 um, to get to Grand Prix. Next time, the next horse I do with Grand Prix will probably be a little bit quicker. Uh, but because it's my first one with Wilf, it's taken me a little bit longer. So I'll probably aim to go for like 10, 11, they'll get to Grand Prix. So it takes so many years to train them up the levels, um, yeah, to get that strength. So something I'm really, I re feel really strongly about is the relationship between horse and rider and that partnership. So let's take Wilf, for example. I used to, I used to be quite hard on myself and feel quite down because He's such a tricky horse to ride in the fact that he was very sensitive. And when I was a little bit younger, when we first started out, I didn't know as much and I felt like I couldn't support him, um, both like riding wise, but also mentally, I didn't feel like I helped him out. I felt like me not being as experienced kind of stressed him out. But instead of kind of beating myself up about it, I decided to change things. So I decided to start to change my mindset. I knew that however good a rider I became, like say practically, it didn't matter if my mindset was in the wrong place because he kept picking up on it. So I really had to start changing how I thought about myself, not just the horses. I had to believe in myself for me to kind of be there for the horses. So I owe everything to the horses, especially him, because he made me up my game. He made me change my mindset and it's helped me in every aspect of my life, not just the riding. So um, yeah, he's taught me everything. Haven't you dodged? So obviously there's practical steps you have to take to getting to the top level. So I often get asked how many horses I ride a day and how many horses I have. Um, I'm currently riding six horses, soon to be seven, because I'm about to get on our three-year-old. I do have a couple of yearlings and also our brood mares and foals. So obviously as they get older, there'll be more horses. Um, so it is a lot of work because the more effort you put into the horses, the more time you put into the horses, the better the outcome. So that's not just the ridden work, that's say the groundwork or just getting to know them. So I really try and put my all into working with the horses. Um, the older ones obviously get ridden for a little bit longer. So Will uh, gets ridden for roughly an hour. That includes warm up and cool down. Um, and that is four times a week he gets trained in the school. I do have a stretching day once a week, so I'd say he probably gets worked intensely twice a week. Then we have like a basics day and then we have a stretch day and then he goes packing on a Wednesday. Um, so that's what happens with the older horses. The younger ones, I just really try and listen to them. And I think that's why explaining how often I ride the horses is really tricky because it's more like going by feel, listening to the horse. Each horse is individual. Um, and if you try and just stick to a set routine, uh, I've done that in the past and it's been, it hasn't helped the horses the most. Um, so I now try and just listen to them, um, feel what's going on in their bodies, feel what's going on with them mentally, because sometimes when they've learned something new, um, it takes a lot out of them and then they just need a little bit more chill time. So then they go hacking, um, maybe some jumping, all that sort of thing. But it's really about like, yeah, going by feel, learning what the horses want. 
So then there is the competition side, which is obviously very important if you want to go around and compete. Um, so this does take a while as well to get them used to. First, we get them used to going out in the lorry um, and going to different venues. So we tend to do pole work clinics, sausage. We tend to do pole work clinics for that because it's not a competition, so it's less stressful. There's less pressure on the horses. Um, and then once they're happy there, we'll take them to little local shows get them used to that and then once they're happy there they will go and do an overnight show which is what Joey's just done um, where he does he did two tests so one one day and then one the next um, and he gets used to staying away from home which can wear them out in itself uh, we always take them with an older horse so that they feel quite comforted by that um, and then yeah you start there some horses take to it quite well, some horses are a little bit more nervous. Again, you just have to listen to the horse, see what they need to do, um, and then we'll just build it from that. So yeah, just keep taking them out, getting them used to the atmosphere, getting them used to the pressure, slowly, slowly, and you're so sussy. And um, yeah, that's that. So luckily I don't have to go this road alone. I have an amazing team with me. So Joey, so number one is my mum and she has been there from day one, obviously. Um, and she's always supported with me, me with my riding. She's always helped me with my riding. And she, a lot of people think she's like my number one critic, but I think she, she just cares so much and wants me to do well. But she is definitely my number one fan. She literally like gets so upset if, I don't do well because she knows, she always says to me like, I know you deserve to do well and I just want you to do well. Um, so she is just an amazing supporter, an amazing motivator and um, yeah, I just couldn't do it without her. The other person that's been amazing as well is um, my trainer and my current trainer is incredible, but also the people who uh, trained me throughout have been awesome. Um, the guy who trains me at the moment is just so encouraging. He always helps me believe in myself. He knows my character so well. Um, so if I'm struggling with something, he knows what to say and how to do it. He helps me push the horses forwards, but not overdo it. Um, so he's incredible. And then also the people that I work with on the yard, they are just amazing. They put so much hard work in every day, um, especially in the winter. It's not the most glamorous job and, you know, it's the same thing day in, day out. And they still turn up on the yard with a smile on their face and they're just so encouraging and if the show goes well, they're really happy, but if it doesn't go well, then they're not fussed. They're not like, oh, come on. Um, they're just really supportive whatever happens. So yeah, yeah, it's amazing. So now you understand the goal, I'm gonna answer a few commonly asked questions about riding multiple horses at different ages, different levels. So the first one is, how do you know if your horse is progressing? So there are a couple of different ways that you can do this. One, you can have a trainer, so they kind of like keep watching you, um, keeping an eye on you, checking that things are ticking along nicely. The other thing as well is competing. So the reason this helps is because you get the judge's perspective. You also get a sheet and um, they give you comments back and you kind of know where you're at with that. Um, the other tip as well that I have is it's really good to look, have like a little bit of a longer goal. So what I used to do was look at like day to day, I used to be like, is this getting better? Is this getting better? And I think with horses, that can be hard because it does take quite a long time to see a difference sometimes, especially when you're trying to like gain muscle, that doesn't happen over like overnight. So I try and look at it like a six month period or even like three month period, like has this horse progressed? Has this horse come along? And if they haven't, then I tweak something, change something. Um, I think as you go and you get, you become like a more knowledgeable rider, that does vary. Like sometimes I'll be able to pick it up quicker. Sometimes it'll take a little bit longer, but that's completely normal. Um, but yeah, that's that one. So another question that's commonly asked is how do you know if the horse is strong enough? So what I do with this is with their ages is I look at say the tests throughout dressage, so like prelim to Grand Prix. And say I'm starting with a young horse, I'll go, okay, so what's in a prelim test? And I'll look at that and I'll know that's manageable for the younger horses or say an inexperienced horse because you might have a 10 year old that's just starting dressage and that's fine. It's not about um, a horse being a certain age and having to be a certain level. But say you want to start at the beginning. So I'll go, okay, let's start a prelim. Can my horse do walk, trot and canter around the outside of the arena, 20 meter circles, changing the rein. When I feel like they can do that and their bodies feel happy with that and their bodies feel supple um, and they seem happy in their character and they're not like 
just struggling too much. I know that then I can move on to novice. So then I'll say, okay, let's try a couple of medium strides. Let's try like a 15 meter circle, maybe a 10 meter circle and start to add that in. So when you start to add a new move in, so for example, a 10 meter circling canter, you'll feel as you go round the circle, the horse might be a bit like, ooh, and you might feel their back drop a little bit. You might feel their hind legs get a little bit wobbly. So when I feel that with the horses, I know, okay, they are struggling with that. That's probably their max at the moment. And then I'm not gonna do too much of it, but I'm going to introduce it so they get stronger. It's really important that you don't overdo a new move, but you also need to do it. So what I do with introducing things is I kind of break that movement apart and I go, okay, what are the different segments to it? So for example, a simple change, which is a canter, walk, canter transition. I'll firstly make sure that the horse can do a really good trot, uh, canter to trot transition. And then after that, I'll start to introduce a canter to walk, make sure they're happy with that. And then I'll start to link the movements together. Um, I hope that makes sense. Is that making sense? Okay. So the last question I have got is, how do you know if you're good enough physically or mentally? I'd say with this one, the first thing is bell, stop it. That you need to just try it. You need to firstly go and do it. Make sure you don't procrastinate over it too much. I think if we all stood there and went like, oh, I'm not ready, I don't think I'm good enough, I don't think I'm good enough, you'd never get on and do it and then you'd never learn from it. Um, the most I've learned is from making mistakes, from doing it wrong. Um, especially like I was saying with Wilf earlier, if I hadn't have just got on, made the mistakes, figured out that my mindset was wrong, I would have never gone around to changing it. Um, so I think, yeah, you've got to just, first of all, get on, get going, go and do it. Um, and then when you're riding, you'll know, you'll pick it up. Just be quite aware of yourself. So say you're struggling physically, be like, okay, maybe I just need to add something into my fitness. But often by riding alone, your fitness will go up. Say you're a little bit stiff, you might just need to do some stretches and that sort of thing. And then mentally, if you don't feel like you're in the right place, I'd say that one does take a little bit longer. I think a lot of people think of mindset as like an end goal. It's not, it's like a journey throughout. I don't think you ever reach this end destination, but just start chipping away at little things. So say you really struggle with self-doubt, start looking into ways you can change that. Maybe go like go to counseling. That's what I did, that really helped. Or you can look into little things like self-talk, improving your self-talk. There's so much content on the internet about mindset. The resources are all out there. You just have to be brave enough and courageous enough to just go and find it. So I've explained the practical stuff about training horses, but I wanted to go into like the mindset stuff a little bit more and subjects that aren't spoken about as much. Um, so the first one is negative feedback. Um, so let's say it's from the judge. You go and do your test and you're not really happy with your mark. Um, so first of all, I think it's important to make sure that you have somebody there who you, you value their opinion and you trust, but is also going to be honest with you um, and get them to check it first and then kind of, you know, either be like, yeah, you're right. I don't think that was fair or, oh, you know what, I think they were right. Um, you need to just need to work on X, Y, and Z. And then if, for example, say both of you have said, you know, this isn't, this isn't fair, this isn't right, you do have a few different things you can do. For example, I'm in the UK, so um, our governing body is British Dressage. And if you're really upset with your mark, um, you can appeal it. So you can tell them, you can show them the video if you videoed it, uh, and then they can rejudge it. And this is kind of the way of making sure that our judges and um, you know the sport stays healthy. Uh, so I think it's actually a really good thing to do. I think a lot of people don't speak about that, but it's good if we talk about these things. Um, and then say you didn't video it and you've just got to try and get over this hurdle. I think you have to remember that dressage is um, a sport where it's somebody's opinion. I can't remember the big word, sorry. Um, but basically it's someone's opinion um, and you can't take that away. However much you train the judges, at the end of the day, it is their opinion on how your test went. And also just to think like it's one test, you've got so many more coming, you've got so many more chances. Even if it's like a big show, it's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the road. So um, just, yeah, take it on the chin. 
So something that people don't often talk about within the equestrian world, I think it's just because of the love of the horses, is the sacrifices that go on. And I do think there are quite a lot within the equestrian world. It just kind of comes with the territory. One of them is definitely time. It takes so much time to look after horses, um, whether you're competing or just like doing it as a hobby. The other is money. It's not a secret that it costs a lot of money to own a horse and also competing and all the gear and all that sort of thing. Um, and the other one is things like relationships and social life. It can be really hard, um, again, because you don't have as much time to build solid relationships, to even sometimes find relationships. Um, the one thing that I would say I found is definitely like social life, especially when I was younger. Um, I remember everyone at school would be like, oh, we're doing this on the weekend. Do you want to come? And I'd be like, I can't, I'm doing this. And I did feel like quite left out because of it. And of course, when people have hung out for a weekend, then they go back to school and they're all talking about it. And you're kind of like, oh, I wasn't there. Um, and that can be really tough, but I'm definitely glad that I didn't kind of sway on that. And I didn't feel like I had to go. And I put the horses first because now I kind of reap the rewards from it. Um, now I find as well that I'm a little bit older. I don't want to go out as much. I like staying in toasty warm um, so it's not doesn't affect me as much but even now it can be hard for me to see friends um, especially ones that live a little bit further away so I have definitely had to sacrifice that so when you're training the older horses say um, Wilf who has just got to Grand Prix I used to always think that you had to do more um, what I'm starting to learn now that less is actually better I think because he knows everything now I I want to kind of preserve him. I don't want to wear him out too quickly. I want him to have like a long competition life. So I really, like I said earlier, I just work him mainly for like two days, like the hard two days. And then the other times is really just suffling up his body, especially with the older horses. You need to make sure they stay soft and supple. It's kind of like you would have to do in the gym, keep doing your stretches. I need to make sure that he's like happy in his work. I don't want him to get sour. I think sometimes you can see horses in the arena and you can see they're not really with the rider, they're not really enjoying it. And that is the last thing I want for my horses. I want them to really enjoy their job. I want them to be like happy even when they get older and towards the end of their career. So um, yeah, I think definitely less is more. So that is the end of this video, guys. I really hope you found it useful and interesting. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and comment and I can reply to your comments. Um, if you haven't already, subscribe to the FBI because we will be bringing you many more videos. And yeah, we'll see you for the next one. Boop. <laughs>